Hey folks, this one's going to be a good one <laughs> because I'm going to offload a lot of truth here and I'm going to do it in a way where pretty much I just have to say this. I really don't care what the rest of society thinks because what I'm about to communicate is important. First of all, Christians, let me just simply say this. It's time to wake up. Anybody who actually wants to stand up for the truth, it's time to wake up in this country because what we are seeing going on right now is getting more absurd by the moment. I just got told the other day that the gay and lesbian community is an oppressed class and we need to do something to sort of uh, lift them up and that kind of a thing. And in essence... Nothing could be further from the truth. As a matter of fact, the gay and lesbian community, in my opinion, have become the oppressors and not the oppressed, just like organizations like Black Lives Matter. Now, a lot of people will look at me and say, oh, James, that's hateful and so on and so forth. Let me make something very clear first. Let me just say that if you want to live a lifestyle that is contrary to what the scriptures talk about, you're free to do that. God created you with free will. He honors your free will and allows you to execute your free will. So in my opinion, if you want to live that lifestyle, that is fine. My problem is when you choose to take that lifestyle and impose it upon other people to make them, force them into agreeing so that your agenda can be carried through. Case in point this month, wherever we go, we are seeing all kinds of symbols that continue to force upon everybody the idea of accepting this lifestyle when this lifestyle is the very thing that is going to destroy people who continue to capitulate to it. Now, I know lots of people are going to get mad by me saying it, but the Bible is the Bible and what the Bible says is true and we need to speak about it. If you ask my opinion... Not that my opinion really matters. People who are conservative are being oppressed. It is going to be a huge sin in other people's eyes for me talking about the things that I'm talking about right now. But you tell me, tell me, is this oppression? Let me show you this picture. Is this oppression? Look at every single one of these symbols that are right here. These are mainstream corporations, media organizations, TV organizations that are modifying their icon to partake in Gay Pride Month. The NFL, they're not shy about it. Lots of other people are not shy about it. They continue to do it. And this is not a statement of solidarity where we say, I stand by you. What this is, is this is a statement that says, we are going to take the totalitarianism route and we are going to make you accept this lifestyle. And if you don't accept this lifestyle, then you will be an outcast. Now, don't get me wrong. I live in the United States of America and I would give my life for everybody to have the freedom to live the way that they want. I have no problem with that. But when you take your lifestyle and you superimpose it upon me or you impose it upon my children, then you are the ones that are erroneous and you are the ones that have become the oppressors. This is getting to the point, folks, where it is so completely out of control that it is becoming a virtual crime for you to speak out against evil nowadays. Now, in my opinion, I think that what this has become is this has become the ultimate exercise in hate. If you don't believe me, look at this. This is something that has been accepted in the mainstream of protesters, and it's actually really, really ugly. But take a look at what this is. I've talked about this book. This is a woman, her, she's a hateful woman. She's a horrible human being. Her name is Shaniqua Walker Barnes. I don't even know where she got her PhD from, but it definitely is in hate. And this is a devotional. She claims to be a Christian woman in the ministry. She writes this devotional. And in her devotional, she says, please help me to hate white people or at least to want to hate them. At least I want to stop caring about them. I don't even want to read the rest of it. It's ugly. This is oppressive, this is hateful, and this is absolutely destructive. And it's time for us to push back. How do we push back? Well, first of all, when it comes to stuff like the things that you're looking at right now, 
nobody who's who does not support this. There's not a single person who should not who does not support this that should actually go out and buy this nonsense. Got a little tongue twisted there. Sorry. We should write to Target and we should tell them, listen, when you carry this book, we will not shop at your store. We should be talking about things like this. We should be going out of our way to saying that this is unacceptable. The more of us that raise our voice concerning hateful things like this, the better. Here's another example. This one's kind of crazy, but I'm going to show you this one. This is also another awful one. Look at this shirt that's actually being sold on Amazon right now. Blue lives murder. Now tell me, what does that communicate? It continues to direct law enforcement officers as individuals who are hateful when nothing could be further from the truth. They call this a murder, black matter, anti-racist police violence BLM gift. How absurd. What would you do in a situation like this? You see the little circle that I've got there on the icon? If you notice the little circle under where it says report product information, report it. If we had thousands of people go to this site and actually report this, Amazon might consider taking it down. The bottom line is this, folks. The bottom line is we have an obligation to start speaking up more and more and more and more. We have a city councilman in the city of Signal Hill that continues to gaslight. He continues to say that he is a non-hateful person, yet his whole stipulation about flying the gay pride flag in our city is that that flag represents the greatest symbol of inclusion that is out there, when nothing could be further from the truth. He actually believes that the flag of the United States of America is not enough to represent the ultimate symbol of inclusion, including the fact that on Memorial Day, the day that we honor and completely build up walking in gratitude the lives of those that have been given, he chooses to fly the gay pride flag on the same flagpole that the United States of American flag is on. Now you tell me, is that right? Folks, this is how you fight back with people like that. First and foremost, we find people to run against him. And I'm going to pray and hope that many will run against him and that he gets deceited. But the next thing we do, we go to city council offices. We go to city hall and we start asking for public records request act. We go in there and we start saying, I want to find, I want every email that you have by the way by law they have to give it to you you start saying i want everything that pertains to all of these things and you start going through the emails and making sure they are following the laws we should be doing this at school boards we should be doing this all over the place where we have the opportunity to do it we should start getting involved where we start speaking up and fighting back because these people cannot be allowed to continue to propagate their hateful behavior i've said it before and i'll say it again I love everybody on this earth because God has called me to. I have nothing personally against anybody who is living the gay and lesbian lifestyle or any other lifestyle for that matter. God has called me to preach the gospel to them and to love them and to care about them. But I staunchly object to the fact that people continue to want to impose their lifestyle upon us. And it's time that we start using every legal remedy that we have available to us to fight back. Because if we don't, folks... We are going to have a problem on our hands. I have the picture of Jerusalem behind me to stand in solidarity with the people of Israel who are right now some of the greatest victims of this type of hate. We need to be people who will stand for truth. Stand up for our law enforcement officers. My goodness, stand up for our children that their hearts and minds would not be indoctrinated by the garbage that continues to be propagated. Folks, it's time for us to push back and it's time for us to take a stand. And we, the people, are called by God to stand up for righteousness and truth. We must eliminate hate at every level. And the only way that we can do that is to stand up for righteousness. It's time to get to work, you guys. God bless you.